So we're going to wrap up today's discussion of will be summary of benefits in streams. And now that you've learned just enough about streams to have an inkling of what they're good for, we can talk about the benefits. It would have made no sense to talk about benefits of streams earlier because you really have not much of a sense of what they do. And we could always move this later, but I want you to be motivated to learn about them. And this is as good a place to talk about that as any. So Java streams provide several key benefits to programs and to programmers. We're going to use a simple case study to talk about this as we go through the benefits. And this is a case study you can get in my GitHub repository, in the image stream gang folder under my live lessons repository. And this particular case study is very, very, very cool. We'll look at this at the point of view. What it's going to do is it's going to download images from some web server or web servers, because it doesn't matter where they come from. And it will then get rid of ones that we've already downloaded and cached and transformed before. So it ignores ones we've already processed. It'll download the ones we haven't seen before. And then it'll apply image transforms to filter the images. And then it'll store them on a local persistent store on the device. So that's what the program is going to do. And what's cool about that is, you know, once you know what it does, and you read what the code says, it is almost a one-to-one -one thing, right? So we're going to go ahead and download non-cached images, apply filters, and store them in a list. So that's pretty cool. So it's very declarative. So one of the nice things you see with streams is it's very concise and readable because it's declarative, meaning that you say what you want to have done, and you leave it up to the streams framework to say how to do it. So if you think about this, you know, sort of from a abstraction point of view, the amount of things you have to care about, which is the what, is small, and the amount of stuff that's handled under the hood by the streams framework, the how, is large, which is exactly what you want. You want to focus on really just the behavior that you need, not all the things that take place under the hood. Another thing to note about the streams-based approach here, there's no Java control flow operations. We don't see if statements, we don't see switch statements, we don't see while loops, we don't see for loops, we don't see for each loops, we don't see do while loops. We just see a stream and it's easy to read this thing pretty much from top to bottom without having to sit there and play compiler and go jumping back to branches. Streams are also flexible and composable. So functions are automatically connected together. You can see here how we connect them up, just like the flow of information through the, the water purification system. In particular, the output from filter, which will be all the items, all the URLs we haven't already downloaded, will be piped into the input to map, and the output from map will be piped into the input from flat map. I'll talk about what flat map does later. Flat map is a, a variant of map that can do a more powerful set of things. Map takes in, for every input element that map take, takes in, it produces one output element either transforms or, or does something, processes something about the one-to-one -one mapping. Flat map, in contrast, can take in one input element and produce n output elements. It can take in n input elements and produce a smaller number of output elements, or it could do a one-to-one -one mapping if you want. But it does a wider range of things than map does. It's a very cool intermediate operation. And another major benefit you get with Java Streams is simplified scalability. So we can parallelize performance without the need to write any multi-threaded code. So we can write the code here, and we can change from stream to parallel stream, and boom, all of a sudden we're taking advantage of the common fork join pool and multi-core processors and all the other stuff that happens with our split apply combine phases we talked about before. And you will never see any you know, new thread, or you'll never see a thread join, or you'll never see a fork. All that stuff is completely and totally hidden from you under the hood by the mechanisms that are provided by, by Java and the Java Streams framework. The common fork join pool provides a pool of worker threads that is used to process all the behaviors in parallel. And the mapping of those threads and the data and the partitioning and the splitting and all that stuff is done transparently, automatically, the underlying process. And this is a great example, by the way, of layering. So under the hood, parallel streams uses the fork join pool engine. Fork join pool engine, as we talked briefly about the other day, and we'll elaborate on later, 
is an object-oriented framework for doing parallel processing of fine-grained tasks in a data parallelism way. It scales very nicely to multiple cores. It does work stealing. And you can think about streams and parallel streams as providing a functional facade that encapsulates the fork join pool object-oriented framework with a nice functional programming API or APIs, which is cool. So that is the end of our summary of Java Streams benefits. As you get more experienced programming streams, these benefits that I talk about here that seem abstract, like declarative and concise and composable and scalable, will become a lot more clear. And I think I might have mentioned before, one of the cool things about the programming assignments we're giving you is as you go through them, you'll get a chance literally to see how the different implementations affect the way in which the images are downloaded and filtered and output watch them run and it's really cool when you get to the parallel version you'll see like wow it's doing all this parallel processing it's much cooler okay so that is the end of today's class